As supposed evidence African Americans are the true Israelites, fake black Israelites claim the Deuteronomy 28 curses apply to African Americans. Deuteronomy 28 affirms curses would be brought upon Israel if it was disobedient and violated the Mosaic Covenant. The curses include and relate to death, slavery, slave ships, Egypt, labor work, occupation, famine, and Israelites dispersing throughout the world, etc. Fake black Israelites falsely claim Deuteronomy 2868 predicts the transatlantic slave trade of the African Americans. However, there are many problems with this position. Firstly, the Deuteronomy 2836 curse was that the Israelites would be brought with their king to a foreign nation if they disobeyed. Africans were not brought to America with a king. On the other hand, during the Assyrian captivity of the Ten Tribes of Israel in 722 BC, the Israelite king Hoshea was taken captive with the Israelites. Also, when Babylon sieged Jerusalem and exiled the people of Judah in 586 BC, the Judite king of Israel, Zedekiah, was also exiled and brought with the Israelites. Thus, Deuteronomy 2836 was fulfilled by the ancient Judeans and Israelites, not African Americans. Secondly, scripture actually tells us this is when the Deuteronomy 28 curses were fulfilled, since referring to the Babylonian captivity, Zechariah 1.6 for example says the Lord's commandments quote-unquote took over the Israelites. The Hebrew word for took over here is nasag, and it's the same word used in Deuteronomy 28, 15, and 45, when mentioning how the Israelites' failure to obey God's commands would lead to the Israelites being took over by curses. Same word used. This shows the Babylonian captivity was the fulfillment of the Deuteronomy 28 curses. Thirdly, referring to the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem and captivity in the 6th century BC, Lamentations 4.10 mentions how the Israelites were starving so bad they ate their own children. This fulfills the curse in Deuteronomy 28.53 which says, And you shall eat the fruit of your womb, the flesh of your sons and daughters, whom the Lord your God has given you, in the siege and in the distress with which your enemies shall distress you. I am not aware of African Americans eating their children due to famine after first being sieged and occupied by Americans. Fourthly, Deuteronomy 28.63 refers to the Israelites being taken from Israel by a nation, not being taken from Africa or the land of Ham to the United States. It says, And you shall be plucked off the land that you are entering to take possession of it." End quote. In the Deuteronomistic historical context, the land the Israelites were entering and taking possession of here was the land of Canaan they would conquer and rename as Israel. Thus, it is impossible for this text to refer to African American slavery. Fifthly, fake black Israelites falsely claim Deuteronomy 2868 predicts Africans going on slave ships to America. Quote, And the Lord will bring you back in ships to Egypt, i.e. the supposed symbolic America, a journey that I promise that you should never make again, and there you shall offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer." End quote. Commenting on this verse, fake black Israelite Elisha Israel writes, History undeniably reveals to us who was hoarded on ships and sold on auction blocks as bondmen and bondwomen, as is described in Deuteronomy 26.68. Only those stripped from Africa have endured being captured as slaves and transported by way of ships to the Americas, Europe, and Asia, end quote. However, this is historically incorrect. The ancient Jews were put on ships and sold as slaves throughout the world by the emperors Titus and Hadrian in the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, and this is when the Deuteronomic curses were fully fulfilled. Here is the history. In AD 70, the Roman commander Titus, who would later become the emperor, amassed troops and invaded Jerusalem destroying the temple and murdering and enslaving the Jewish population. This happened during the first Jewish war against the Romans between AD 66 and 70, and it led to a great famine in Jerusalem, according to the ancient historian 
Josephus. This fulfills the hunger or famine curses in Deuteronomy 28.48. Also, Josephus tells us that due to this famine, the Jews were forced to survive by eating their own children, which fulfills the cannibalism curse in Deuteronomy 28.53. By the way, these famine curses were also fulfilled during the Babylonian captivity. Now, Roman commander Titus had 97,000 Jews enslaved and 1,100,000 Jews murdered in Jerusalem. Josephus informs us that those above the age of 17 years old were transported on ships to the Egyptian mines to do labor as slaves. This fulfills the slavery curse, which again says, And the Lord will bring you back in ships to Egypt. This text has nothing to do with Africans coming to America on ships. Those that were under 17 years old were sold as slaves, and many others were transported to other provinces as presents to be destroyed in gladiator games by the sword or by beasts. Something similar happened under Emperor Hadrian's Roman reign in the next century. After the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, slowly the city was rebuilt and many Jews returned to it. The Jews even built an altar on the destroyed Temple Mount and thus temple ritual was temporarily reinstated. The Roman 10th Legion troops stayed in Jerusalem to keep order. Then a Jewish resistance arose called the Bar Kokhba Revolt, which led to another Jewish-Roman war, lasting between AD 132 and 136. The Romans decimated the Jews, murdering 585,000 of them. 50 Jewish outposts and 985 villages were destroyed. These and the previous instances of Jerusalem's invasions and destruction fulfill the Deuteronomy 28.52 curse, which again says, They shall besiege you in all your towns until your high and fortified walls, in which you trusted, come down throughout all your land. This was not fulfilled in Africa. At this time, many Jews also died due to starvation from famine, and many were enslaved by Emperor Hadrian, who then banned all Jews from entering Jerusalem. Professor of Jewish History Shmuel Safre notes, Particularly notorious was the Terebinth market north of Hebron, where Jewish slaves captured by Hadrian were sold in such large numbers that, according to one report, a Jewish slave could be bought for a horse's ration, end quote. This fulfills the Deuteronomy 28.68 statement that, quote, There you shall offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer, end quote. Were there no buyers of African-American slaves? No, there were many buyers. Likewise, George Williams notes at this time, many Jews, quote, were sold as slaves at Hebron or at Gaza, which hence received the name of Hadrian's Mart, while the remainder were transported to the slave markets of Egypt, and thence dispersed throughout the world, end quote. This dispersing of the Jews after being put in slave markets in Egypt fulfills the curse of Deuteronomy 2864, which says, Then the Lord will scatter you among all the nations, from one end of the earth to the other. There you will worship other gods, gods of wood and stone, which neither you nor your ancestors have known. This Deuteronomy scattering curse was also fulfilled during the Assyrian exile in 722 BC, where the ten lost tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Thus, all the Deuteronomy 28 curses relating to death, slavery, slave ships, slavery in Egypt, labor work, occupation, famine, cannibalism, and Jews dispersing throughout the world were clearly fulfilled during these historical Jewish events we discussed, and not by African Americans who are not even Israelites. Fake black Israelism assumes there was Jewish mass migration to West Africa after the tribe of Judah was exiled and dispersed during the Babylonian captivity in the 6th century BC and after the Jewish Roman Wars in AD 70 and 135. Fake black Israelites claim prior to being sold as slaves and brought to America, this supposed mass migration of Israelites to West Africa occurred so that later African-American slaves are the descendants of the tribe of Judah. However, there's no evidence for this. Therefore, the Africans who came to America as slaves were not the Jews. Instead, after the Babylonian exile, for example, many Judeans remained in Babylon to live 
and others returned to Israel. The rest were dispersed throughout the entire world in Mesopotamia, Arabia, Egypt, Asia Minor, Thrace, and Rome. They did not all just migrate to Africa as fake black Israelites assume. Based on the early evidence, Maristilla Bonacini and Zvi Ekstein note, in the first century, one million Jews lived in the Parthian Empire, one million in North Africa, mainly Egypt, between 200,000 and 400,000 in Syria and Lebanon, between 200,000 and 400,000 in Asia Minor, i.e. modern Turkey, and the Balkans, i.e. modern Albania, Bulgaria, Greece, and Yugoslavia, and another 100,000 to 200,000 lived in Western Europe, that is Italy, France, and the Iberian Peninsula. This is a very different picture than the false idea Judah just migrated to West Africa. Moreover, after the Jewish-Roman wars in the first and second centuries, the remaining Jews living in Jerusalem were also, quote, dispersed throughout the world, as George William notes, as opposed to West Africa. Now, although we have evidence of some migration of Jews to Northern Africa, mainly Egypt, the fact is the number of Jews living there evaporated as time went on. Bodicini and Eckstein note the leading scholars of ancient Jewish demography affirm that by the 7th century AD, these Jews who were originally 1 million in North Africa, mainly Egypt, reduced in size to, quote, no more than a few thousand, end quote, since in the 7th century, records prove 75% of all Jews worldwide instead lived in Mesopotamia and Persia, not West Africa. The remaining 25% of Jews worldwide were in Europe, Israel, the Balkans, Asia Minor, and Lebanon, not West Africa. Indeed, in the 7th century, only 4,000 Jews remained in Africa. These 4,000 then expanded in size to around 30,000 by AD 1170. However, these Jews in Africa were then decimated due to plagues and famines in AD 1201-1202 as well as the Black Death in 1348, which continued to drastically reduce the Jewish population in Africa even into the 15th century. Given these facts, it's impossible to say the 400,000 or so West African slaves who were brought to America were the Jews of the tribe of Judah. There were just not enough Jews living in Africa during that time to make such an idea possible, and we know the Jews actually migrated around the world. Thus, it was actual West Africans who came to America as slaves, not Jews. This fact is confirmed by genetics research as well, which we will now discuss. A 2015 genetic study by K. Bryce et al. in the American Journal of Human Genetics using high-density genotype data showed African Americans show average proportions of 73.2% African, 24% European, and 0.8% Native American ancestry. Thus, African Americans do not have ancestry from Israel. Moreover, using genome-wide nuclear markers, a 2009 study by the University of Pennsylvania called the Genetic Structure and History of Africans and African Americans likewise revealed the ancestry of African Americans is predominantly from Niger Cordofanian, 71%, European, 13%, and other African 8% populations. It also revealed, quote, most African Americans are likely to have mixed ancestry from different regions of Western Africa, end quote. Hence, DNA evidence proves African Americans do not descend from Israel. They come from Africa.